Welcome to Darien, King of Keldor. As far as opening hand goes, yeah, I like it. We don't, unfortunately, we don't really have any sort of painful lands. But, um, yeah, we can get some good stuff done with this. We're going to keep on this one. It looks like our opponent will hold at 7-2. So let's go to get the planes in. Sorry, I had a... Uh, <laughs> trying to say that our hand was good. And I had a little bit of a hiccup right there. And I was trying not to make some weird ungodly noise into the mic. Uh, skid down to Johnny's welcome. And then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Play gets to ready. Scrap Savant. So... Yeah, red versus white. Uh, we're playing Darien, King of Keldor. Hope you're excited for the pain army. Uh, I'm ready to turn that pain up to 11. Uh, whenever you're dealt damage, you may create that many 1-1 white soldier creature tokens. Now, one of the fun things with Darien is that whenever you're dealt damage, it does not matter where that damage comes from. We can deal it to ourselves. Uh, start, stop hitting yourself. It's still going to give us some soldier tokens. So, that's one of the fun things about Darien. Uh, it's going to get down planes. It's going to go for Sunset Pyramid. Uh, that way, we can at least have some sort of card draw. You know, we've got Disenchant if we want to. We can use this enchant to take care of something on our opponent's side of the battlefield. If not, we'll simply just end up going for Sunset Pyramid and getting some uh, getting some card draw going. Oh, and it does have the uh, the Pyramid counters on it. That's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so long story short, deal damage, you get that many 1-1 one, one white tokens. Uh, playing against uh, Dreddy, Scrap Savant, plus two, discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. Uh, sacrifice an artifact if you do return target artifact card from your graveyard of the battlefield. Then for a minus 10 ability, you get an emblem that says whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. And our opponent looks, feels like we're playing against Modern Affinity. What just happened? Now, we do have Disenchant to take care of Thran Dynamo. Um, they don't have enough mana to Tap mana vault, so I actually kind of like going for that. Uh, let's go to get down planes, and uh, we'll worry about getting down Oketra's monument here in just a little bit. Yeah, let's go and go for uh, disenchant. That is some uh, unnatural mana right there, and Darian does have something to say about that. So we're going to take care of that uh, Thran Dynamo. Uh, they will not be able to untap Mana Vault, at least for a couple more turns, unless they get down some sort of Mana Rock, and uh, also be able to keep them off to ready. Now, if they do make the lane drop, um, that will allow them to get down to ready, but at least uh, that's going to be their entire turn at this point right now. Glad we took care of that Thran Dynamo. Uh, but yes, we did take care of both commanders. It is free time. We can talk about whatever we want. That's going to be Darian. Uh, there's a couple new additions to the deck we did, and as you can tell, we added a Johnny's Welcome. That's the M19 card. I don't know if I've recorded with Darien since M19, so it's at least semi-new to the deck if you haven't seen it before. So we have a Johnny's Welcome in here. Uh, we also added um, the Divine Visitation, which hopefully we draw into that. Divine Visitation is the new 5-man enchantment from Guilds of Ravnica. That is, uh, if you would create a token under your control, you get a 4-4 uh, Angel token with Vigilance, which is uh, pretty good. <laughs> Not going to lie. It's always fun to get that down. Uh, it's going to get down Planes. Yeah, I guess at this point, we're going to go for a Catcher's Monument. I think I like that. We go for a Catcher's Monument. That's going to allow us to get a reduced cost on Darien. They do have the line of play of going for Sacking Artifact and bringing back Spine out of their graveyard. So that's something we do need to watch out for. But uh, like most of my decks, I don't run Graveyard Hate. Um, so... We, we need to outgrind this Dreddy match. Um, anything else, we're going to go pass the turn to our opponent. Yeah, I hate running Graveyard Hate. I don't know. I need to start running it. I run Bajuka Bog and Black Decks, but that's um, it's about it. To, truth be told, I always like seeing a Graveyard Deck go off, so it's always fun kind of fighting against it. That's, I think I kind of like the challenge of it, so... <laughs> but I do need to start putting stuff like Relic of Progenitus and, you know, a couple of different Graveyard Hate cards. It's always nice just to have them sometimes because Commander can be uh, so crazy with stuff coming out of the graveyard. But as far as new stuff in the deck, I, we have Divine Visitation. I'm trying to think what else. I think uh, there's something else I might have added to the deck, but I think that's going to be it for about right now. And also, if you haven't seen this deck before, this is... Um, Darien's a ton of fun to play. Um, typically, mono white's one of my least favorite colors, unless it has some sort of like really cool interaction. Like El Ketra. El Ketra is a really fun commander to play. You know, it's fun trying to get to that creature count where you can start swinging in with El Ketra. And so, uh, you know, there's a certain drawback to it or some certain like challenge you have to meet. And Darien is definitely one of those mono white commanders. All right, so we draw into Mana Vault. Um, it's going to get down planes. It's going to go for Mana Vault. That'd be good. Let's get down Mana Vault. Let's go ahead and go for Darien, uh, King of Keldor. It's going to be five total mana. Let's go one, two, three off of uh, Mana Vault, and that's going to be two white. It's also going to give us a white, white uh, warrior creature token with Vigilance and allow us to kind of gain some life. All right, let's always click OK on this one. Always yield. Now, let's say that our opponent does end up going for a uh, spine targeting Darien. They could certainly go for that. We can still recast it. So, if they end up going for a Johnny's Welcome, that would actually kind of 
be the one of the better cards to target with Spine, simply for the reason in that once you get down there and you get some sort of pain lane going, um, with that pain lane not really doing any damage to you and giving you soldiers on the battlefield, actually kind of going positive on resources in a way. And so by having some sort of uh, enter the battlefield life gain, that really kind of offsets the pain lanes that we're going for. But hopefully we draw into something like Ancient Tomb to really kind of take advantage of that, and we'll see what we do hit. As far as next turn goes, we do have Spring Jack Shepherd in the hand. We do have Goats in here, which in a lot of Anthem effects. So once we kind of get those Anthem effects going, it makes it to where, you know, if we have a lot of these soldiers on the battlefield, or at least some sort of creatures that aren't tokens, uh, getting down Spring Jack Shepherd is kind of like, a, it's almost like the uh, Deranged Hermit in white. <laughs> You got to do a little work with it, but it's still a lot of fun. All right, so with Sunset Pyramid, we do have at least two mana available right now, so we can go for that to draw a card. Uh, we'll see what our opponent's going to get it down, but more than likely, we'll still end up going for that uh, Sunset Pyramid activation. But I'm just going to go for Jaya, and then draw that, discolor that many cards. Okay, so at this point right now, unfortunately, we can't deal any damage to us to kind of keep some of these Planeswalkers in check. Hopefully, we survive another turn. Um, they have gone pretty hard and heavy with... Um, getting a lot of cards into the graveyard. They only have two cards in the hand. So, um, and then also with Jaya, they're getting some pretty good card advantage too. So we'll see what uh, what they get down. Maze of Ith, that's not too bad. That's that's not the end of the world for us with Maze of Ith. Let's go and go for a Sunset Pyramid activation, remove a brick counter to draw a card, and draw to Dictate of Heliod. That should be a really good way for us to deal with the Duretti or Jaya. Okay, um... We have the Mana Vault trigger, not going to pay for one. Uh, we might end up paying for that, but at this point right now, getting that damage is going to give us these soldiers on the battlefield that we desperately want to get. All right, we're going to get that one soldier token. Yes, we're definitely going to use that ability. We're going to gain that life, put us back up to 32. And let's go to get down planes. Now what we can do is we can flash in Dictate of Heliod. That's going to give our creatures plus two, plus two. Now if we swing in, they block with Mirror Retriever, they're going to be able to bring back another target artifact card uh, from their graveyard to their hand. We're not looking at ultimate just yet. Yeah, let's do this. Let's um, let's go for Spring Jack Shepherd. That's going to give us another soldier. And basically what we can do is we can flash in Dictate of Heliod to really kind of deal some damage to some of these creatures. I don't think we want to swing in just yet and allow them to bring something back out of the graveyard. We're going to actually get to gain a ton of life off of this uh, Spring Jack Shepherd entering the battlefield too. Okay, let's get the uh, devotion to Spring Jack Shepherd. I think that's going to be one, two, three. I don't know. It's just whenever you see these goats, I always want to laugh. I love goats too. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell, yeah, I really do. I like goats. I think they're pretty cool. I, I would love, if I had a, like a, uh, a farm, I would have goats on it. And that's not a joke. I don't know. I think they're pretty cool. I've always wanted to own them. And um, when I was on a delivery, yeah, we're not swinging in because I don't want any sort of mirror retriever shenanigans. Um, bringing stuff back out of their graveyard. I, I want them to have to do a lot of their stuff during their main phase. And then, like I said, we flash in Dictate of Heliod. We've got an entire board state. They're not going to see that coming, so that'll be pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I like goats. And so um, when I used to do this delivery route, um, I would pass by this field of goats sometimes. And um, there's one time they were by the fence, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of mean, but I was like, oh, let's just honk the horn. Let's see if <laughs> what these goats are going to do. And so I honked the horn, and they took off running like like it was a tornado coming. And I could not stop laughing for like 10, 15 minutes because all these goats were like eating grass. And then once, as soon as I honked the horn, they turned up, and then they just took off running. Like it was like, run, run, Frankie. Well, Frankie wasn't out there. Frankie was flying up above watching over them. But um, they were all just yelling at the other goats, and they all took off running. And so I would go by this place once a week and then um yeah i'll just combine a toot the horn and the goats will take off running and they go back to eating their uh <laughs> eating their grass and so uh but i eventually i stopped honking at the goats because i didn't want to you know maybe give one of these goats a heart attack or something like that but about three or four weeks i would just run by and just honk the horn at them and they take off running so whenever i see a herd of goats i always want to uh <laughs> But it's going to go for spine with Duretti. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, I always want to honk at goats. It's a really hard thing for me not to honk at a, an entire thing of goats. It's pretty, it's, it's, the struggle is real. But it's going to go for spine. They're going to uh, be able to destroy target permanent. Let's see what they're going to target off of this. I mean, if they go for Darien, they go for Darien. We're still looking at Helion flashing in. Might be able to close the game out with Helion. They're going to go for Sunset Pyramid. Okay, we'll get the uh, remove a brick counter from it and draw a card. 
But if that's the worst they're going to do, that's not too bad. Draw to Homeward Path. Okay. Not super excited about Homeward Path, but uh, hoping to get a little bit, some other sort of uh, way to kind of amplify this out. In fact, let's stop talking about goats and do some combat math. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got at least nine creatures on the battlefield. It's going to be 18 total damage. And then I think that might be, maybe might be lethal. We'll see. Let's see what we draw into. Um... We have a Johnny's Welcome. Yeah. All right. Let's get the Man of All Trigger. That'll be another token that, yes, we're not going to pay for that. We're going to take that one damage because we would definitely love to have another soldier. And then Intrepid Hero. Okay. That's not going to help us uh, win the game, but uh, we can definitely get in some good damage. No, we're not going to use, yes, we're going to use that ability. Get that soldier down, gain a life. And then also, whenever I play Dwarf Fortress, I always, uh, I always bring goats with me. If you if you play Dwarf Fortress, that's one of my favorite animals to bring is I get a nice little goat farm going. So uh, playing Dwarf Fortress is my way of... Uh, we're going to swing an entire crew at our opponent. Um, but playing Dwarf Fortress is my way of uh, <laughs> having a goat farm. So it reminds me, I need to do Dwarf Fortress Let's Play sometime soon. All right, so we got the entire crew swinging in. I will be flashing in Dictate of Heliod. Maybe our opponent's kind of anticipating that. Um, the only downside is with Maze of It, they can definitely untap target attack and creature um, before that comes in, before we actually deal combat damage. So we'll see what they can do. But let's go and flash in Dictate of Heliod. There we go. Surprise goats. We're going to give these goats some nice steroids, and that's going to pump up the entire board. Uh, so we're looking at, that's going to be uh, 2, 4, 6, 8. That's going to be 11. Uh, they're going to tap Darien. Okay. So we're still going to get in for a pretty good chunk of damage. Uh, the only downside is they will be able to bring back an artifact, but at this point right now, it's nothing too crazy. And we're looking at a not even a Jaya uh, ultimate or a Duretti ultimate. So we'll see what they decide to bring back with Beer Retriever. And then we'll get down Intrepid Hero, which will still allow us to, uh, you know, hopefully kind of clear the way for any sort of creature that might want to block our entire goat army. And they will be bringing back Mana Vault. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for Intrepid Hero. If they do somehow gain control of our stuff, so, well, we can rebuild with Intrepid Hero and a Catcher's Monument. Yeah, let's hold on to Intrepid Hero. Argument could be made for getting it down, but let's say they have something like Our Devastation or Blasphemous Act. Um, I definitely want, with them sitting at 6 and us having Dictative Heliod, simply casting Intrepid Hero is going to give us a 3-3 and a 2-2. Two, two. And so, yeah, I don't mind holding on to that, especially the damage from Mana Vault. So we're going to hold on to Intrepid Hero. Even if they do get down something that can block our creatures, we should be able to push past them on that. So... Let's see what sort of shenanigans and get going with Jaya and Dreddy on the battlefield. But yeah, with Dwarf Fortress, I, uh, I've recorded a couple Let's Plays in the past, uh, but I never finish it. So um, I do want to do one sometime soon, but uh, what I'm probably going to do is uh, just kind of bank up a lot of those episodes and then not have to... Uh, I was trying to do it in addition to doing like daily magic videos and that was rough and I got really mad that I just couldn't finish it. And so I want to make sure I have them saved up, but I definitely enjoy Dwarf Fortress. I always like to bring goats with me and that's kind of one of the things where uh, we'll, uh, I'll have a few goats. Once we kind of get the goat farm going, I'll slaughter a couple of the goats from time to time and kind of cook them up for the dwarfs and that's always kind of cool to see what stuff they can come up with. Uh, we'll sort of, uh, you know, use some of the goat fur for the army, different things like that. But one of the, uh, the fun times I embark with the uh, two male goats or two female goats and one male goat um you know thinking the male goat and the two female goats that they would you know have some babies together and then i can grow my farm really quick that way and then it was after about a year you know i'm getting my fort ready i'm getting wood i'm getting stone i'm making sure we have water and then i realized like we don't have any goats we just got the same three goats and if you don't know about door fortress door fortress is a wildly deep game um you know, each single person in Dwarf Fortress, they have thoughts and feelings, they have sexual preferences, they have things that make them happy, things that makes them sad. And the same thing go for animals. So the, the goat that I brought, he was uh, he was gay. He did not prefer a women goat. And so that's why we did not have any uh, any young goats, because he did not like what I had brought with me. And so that, I always thought that was kind of interesting. And so, I th oh no, we got Ugin. Okay, that's going to clean the entire board out. Ugh. Like I said, we can still bounce back with an intrepid hero. Okay, let's see. So they have to they're gonna have to go for the minus X ability. And that's still gonna leave Darien, that's still gonna leave Jay on the battlefield. And that still leaves Maze of If. So we'll see what we can do about it. Because it basically went down to three. Oh, that's a bummer. I hate Ugin. <laughs> oh, that's 
<laughs> this kills the crab. All right, we're not going to pay for Mana Vault because we want to get these soldiers going again. Oh, that was brutal. And then we're looking at a Jaya Ultimate. Uh, you may cast instant sorcery cards from your graveyard. This card cast would be uh, put in your graveyard exile instead. All right, we're going to get another soldier token on the battlefield. We do draw into City of Brass. Let's go and get down City of Brass. Yeah, that's just basically... Well, we'll for, go ahead and force the Maze of Ith, but we're going to go and swing in a Jaya. Just to kind of force the issue. Maybe they let us swing in on her, but I doubt they're going to do this. Okay, they're going to go for Maze of Ith. Uh, let's go and get down a Trepid Hero. Yeah, and even if we got down Trepid Hero last time, it would have died to the... Uh, to Ugin. Or got exiled with Ugin. But our, we lost our Goat Army. Man. That stinks. All right, so we're going to get down on Catcher's Monument. That's going to give us another token on the battlefield. Then hopefully, this will allow us to kind of push past Maze of Ith. We even do have the City of Brass activation to get that one damage to get the soldier down. So uh, we'll kick it back over there. Worst case scenario, they go for Ugin with a minus three. They go for minus eight off of Jaya to get that ultimate. Um, we're looking at Reverberate, Tormenting Voice. I think we're still in a pretty good position to... Uh, to be okay, yeah, because you you get a bonus that says whenever you you may cast instant or sorcery cards from your graveyard, it's gonna put them down to two. Um, if you card cast this way, put it in your graveyard, exile it instead. So even if they go for the ultimate, we're looking at tormenting voice and reverberate, and so they're probably gonna have to use Jaya to go for the plus one ability just to kind of find some sort of answer. Uh, we're looking at the plus two from Ugin, three damage to any target. That's maybe gonna be intrepid hero or the soldier, or the warrior token, and with them being at two. Um, that should allow us to kind of push past on this one. I do have auto yield off, so that way we can still tap City of Brass, but while our opponent's thinking, all right, there they go. They're going to go for Jaya, but says so going to let them do a little bit of thinking, kind of speed the video up, but by all means, go for it. So they're going to have that ultimate of Jaya, and we'll see what they've got in their hands. All right, opponent's going to go for Tormenting Voice out of the graveyard, and also go for the Reverberate too of discarding two cards. They're going to be able to draw four cards, but they're really going to be left at, like, this three mana? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you got to dig, you got to dig. So let's see what they can get going. And they do get down a second red source. So we're looking at one, two, three, four. So even if they're going for Hour of Devastation and they actually go for uh, Ugin, exiling a lot of that stuff. Let's go and go for City of Brass. Uh, steal one damage to us. That way, if they got some removal, they probably would have used it in response to that Ugin. And they go for the minus three ability to uh, exile all that stuff, all the tokens. That's going to give us another token. Yes, we're going to use that ability. And then maybe they're just banking on a Maze of Ith. Uh, that does put them in a spot where they can go for something like Lightning Strike or Lightning Bolt on the Soldier token and still untap a Darien. But thankfully, we did get rid of Ugin and both Jaya. So hopefully, we'll be pretty be okay on this one. All right, opponent it is tapping for four mana, so let's see if they're going to go for off of this. I'm curious to see what this uh, could be. Oh, never mind. Okay, they're going to go and pass the turn then. So um, they did attempt to tap for four mana, so I'm not entirely sure what they could be doing for four mana, but um, we'll at least go and cash in this mana vault trigger. Uh, not going to pay four, no, because we want that damage. We want the pain army. And we'll get that. Uh, if they have some sort of removal, they should use it now to get around the one damage on the stat. Oh, we drawed it another plane. That's not what we want to see. Darian, let's get us some good stuff. Yes, we're going to use that ability. And let's go and push in. There will be five and three. And uh, if, if they do have something to take care of Darian, we'll at least go and tap down City of Brass. And I think uh, with the Catcher's Monument, we still should be able to uh, get down Darian again because that's going to be, I think, eight or seven mana. And we'll be pretty good. All right, so we're going to go for Maze of Ith on Darian. Okay, and that does put them down to negative one, so Darian's going to get it done. Uh, Darian and his goat army were able to uh, surpass Ugin in his spirit dragon army. That's always, man, it always feels so good to uh, to beat Ugin and uh, to kind of outgrind Ugin, so I definitely enjoyed that. But anyway, if you enjoyed the goat talk today, and if you enjoyed your time at the Darian pain army, make sure you like and subscribe. And also, Frankie's doing good. I, I talked to him after the game yesterday, and he's got a few feathers that are singed, but uh, Frankie's doing well. And I want to say thank you for everybody who are concerned about Frankie. Frankie. Um, he's doing really good. He's on the path to recovery and that's what matters. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, <laughs> like and subscribe. Bye.